What is up guys, welcome back to the channel and to another roundup episode keeping you up to date on all the latest news and rumors. And today we got a lot of updates to discuss following Monday Night Raw and Smackdown Live as well as the last roundup that we did which we cover all the latest following last weekend and potential plans that WWE had but ultimately changed which is not really a surprise so we're gonna be following up on some of those stories that we covered on the previous roundup. More confirmed news for a lot of the events that WWE is having within the next four weeks and some of the latest in regards to wwe 2k19 so without further ado let's get right to it and i want to start off with probably the hottest topic of discussion right now which is Shawn michaels potentially coming back to the wwe and wrestling his one last match this past week on monday night Raw, we actually had Shawn michaels returning cutting a promo giving his prediction on the triple h versus the undertaker match but in this segment we actually had the undertaker return turning and pretty much calling out HBK and letting him know that come out of retirement and face me once again or continue to fear the Undertaker. This segment was actually so well done that in the end I feel like it accomplished the opposite. We were supposed to get hyped for the Undertaker versus Triple H match at the Super Showdown event but instead we ended up coming out wanting Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels once again. And during this segment HBK strongly hinted about one more match as he addressed the reason why he retired and he made a promise not to return and this topic was actually addressed on the wrestling observer radio in which it was indicated that wwe usually doesn't hint that strongly about something unless they have something in mind adding to that discussion is the fact that apparently wwe did this whole segment simply so that the wwe universe is actually talking about it and it is obvious that they definitely succeeded even though most of the talk is Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels instead of Undertaker versus Triple H and this is just speculation but of course Wrestlemania 35 is next year we could get another Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels match 10 years after the Wrestlemania 25th match which is considered to be the best match ever in the WWE moving on to some other reports so a lot of people were shocked when Chris Jericho ended up showing up at the All In event and destroyed Kenny Omega after their match with a few forearms and a couple of code breakers. As it turns out, fans weren't the only ones who were surprised by Chris Jericho's surprise appearance. Mike Johnson of PW Insider Elite revealed that he actually had more than a couple of messages during the All In asking about Chris Jericho's activity. Mike Johnson is indicating that WWE had no idea that Chris Jericho was going to be showing up at the event. And he added that as soon as Chris Jericho showed up at the event, there were a couple of his sources from WWE asking if Chris Jericho was really at the event. He added while sure WWE wasn't happy he's not on the contract, they can't stop him from showing up wherever it is that he wants to. And that if WWE doesn't want him to do it again, they're gonna have to lay down a huge contract that he agrees to sign. So it certainly looks like WWE wasn't happy that Chris Jericho ended up appearing at the All In event. But let's not forget the fact that at this point Chris Jericho who pretty much does whatever he wants and he is saving years of his career by just doing wrestling part-time and making it special just like he did this past weekend and moving on to some other quick news so WWE has announced a few matches for the evolution pay-per-view but it was also promised to be a historic event but there has been a lot of reports indicating that the event wasn't selling too well but ringside news have provided an update in regards to this report indicating that the numbers for the evolution gate are not as bad as it is being reported and perhaps the addition of Lita versus Mickey James might have sold a couple of people on the show but the general feeling is that they will be able to sell out the whole arena. Brad Shepard ended up indicating that currently it is about 70% full and it is expected to sell out within this month so even if the tickets are quote unquote selling very slowly it is still getting sell out. On top of that let's not forget that they haven't announced the full match card just yet on some other news wwe is in a very tough situation right now because they're promoting for three shows not just evolution not just the hell in a cell but also the wwe super showdown event and this week they ended up announcing a bunch of new matches for it including ronda rousey and the vela twins versus the riot squad the new day versus the bar for the smackdown tag team titles and asuka and naomi versus the iconics they also ended up announcing that the 
WWE Mixed Match Challenge is coming back. So it is insane how many things WWE is currently promoting on a weekly television. And I'm certainly not a big fan of. Just because it is hard to keep up by just watching the television. On some other news, it looks like WWE is going to be holding a special Friday night edition of Raw. As the Little Caesars Arena in Detroit announced that WWE will hold a Friday edition of Raw on December 28, 2018. It remains to be seen if this will be a tape show that will broadcast later or if WWE plans to have the show air live on that Friday. But chances are that instead it will just be an episode of Monday Night Raw that will air on Monday which is New Year's Eve. Speaking about Monday Night Raw, Seth Rollins was actually legitimately busted open this week after going through a windshield. He ended up posting some graphic image of it and it seems like it's just gonna leave him a scar and he's not actually injured and will not be taking any time off. Of course there were some concerns that maybe he is gonna need some time off to heal up but it's good to hear that that is not the case. Do expect him to probably wear some tape on it. And sticking to Monday Night Raw, we ended up seeing Bobby Roode teaming with Chad Gable which was certainly very unusual. And of course there's a lot of speculation up to why these two guys ended up teaming up. Well Case I see it is reporting that this is the first step into turning Bobby Roode heel. After feuding with Bobby Roode there's talk of reuniting Chad Gable with Jason Jordan once he is cleared to return but as of right now the main focus is to turn Bobby Roode heel and they going with this direction probably to do it a little bit different. Hopefully it does happen soon enough because Bobby Roode certainly needs it and it is something that a lot of us been asking for. And moving on to some other rumors and something that we have been talking about for quite a while now and that is new titles in the women's division. With the old women's pay-per-view evolution coming up on October 28th, the women's division have certainly been receiving a lot of attention in recent weeks. There have been a lot of names brought back in for the show and some of the matches are going to be very interesting. However, you need something more than just dream matches which is where things may be going. And according to the Bar Burners Fired Up podcast, which again this is just speculation so keep that in mind, they're indicating that there is a chance that a woman's mid-card title could be introduced to the company in the next few months. This is in addition to the long rumor WWE Women's Tag Team titles which has been discussed for several months now and has even been teased by other wrestlers such as Bayley and Sasha Banks. If this single title is brought in, reports are indicating that it could be announced at the event or later on after that. Think of this singles title as what the Intercontinental Championship is on Monday Night Raw or what the United States Championship is on SmackDown Live. So again, it is just the quote-unquote mid-card title. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys think. I don't necessarily think that it's needed. I feel like with the SmackDown Women's Championship and the Monday Night Raw Women's Championship, plus the already rumored tag team titles, I feel like those three are gonna be enough. Granted, the women's division will be much bigger by next year, but even then, I don't feel like it's necessary, as once they introduce the tag team titles, which we know are coming, that's gonna fill the needed gap in the women's division. And the last thing that I wanna cover for you guys in this roundup is the latest bit on WWE 2K19. And this week is gonna be another big week because of course, we're getting another episode of the reveal hosted by Lana and Rusev and WWE games ended up confirming when exactly this is going to be taking place. Rusev and Lana return with new special guests to live stream the WWE 2K19 roster reveal part 2 on Thursday September 6 at 10 a.m pacific time which is 1 p.m eastern time and just like we did last week we're gonna be doing a watch party on the Twitch channel so make sure to follow me over there. WWE games also ended up indicating that the focus of this week reveal will be 205 Live and SmackDown Live Superstars. Which is expected as last week we ended up having Monday Night Raw and NXT Superstars. Anyways guys, I thank you for watching. That is what I got for you on this roundup episode. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, turn on those notifications. And I will both drop that like button to be fully up to date on all the latest. A win the road to 100,000 subscribers. Much to see you. Dig it.